In our last video, we took a look at the course room in Collaborate Ultra. We looked at the participants area, uh, which now has our two students in it. And we looked at the interaction bar at the bottom of the screen. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Collaborate panel on the right hand bottom side of the screen and take a look at its features. So of course, to open it, click on the panel. Clicking this icon provides access to the chat, the attendees, the share content, and the settings pane. Chat then allows you to, by default, <laughs> chat with people in the room. You can see that I can either chat with everyone in the room, so I can say something to all students in the room. So this, once I send it, is seen by all students, and you can see there's a record of the chat at this point and of course we can hear back from somebody who may have something to say and Sam says to us okay that sounds good the other approach of course is to uh, chat with the moderators in this case the only moderator here is me so perhaps not so interesting the other thing that you can do is to find someone to chat with and what you are going to do there is to type in someone's name. Obviously not a big deal here, but in a larger class might be. And so I type in one of the people I'm looking for, and here comes Sam Adams. So now I can chat directly with Sam, and only Sam will see it. All other participants will not. And so now only Sam has seen that. It's worth noting that when a user leaves the session, whether or not it's voluntarily, and comes back in, the chat pane is going to be empty. It's not going to show past posts. Likewise, anybody who comes into the room late after we begin using chats will not see any chat that occurred before they came in. Moving to the next choice in this panel, we see the attendees. Clicking on the attendees icon displays the attendees pane and it lets you see an alphabetical list of users that are in the room uh, separated by their role. In this case, we can see there are three users in the room, one moderator or instructor, that's me, and we see that there are two students in the uh, room. We also can see whether or not the folks have their microphones on. If we have a lot of participants in the room, uh, all speaking at once, it can be a little uh, noisy. We could ask someone to turn off their microphone so that we don't have as much noise going on. Here we see a microphone going off. Here we see another microphone going off. Alternatively, if we wanted, we can click on the three button options circle at the top right and mute everybody in the room. In this hamburger menu next to each participant's name, you can see how good their connection is. Here we can see that uh, the connection is going quite well for our students. It would also let us know uh, if somebody were to be away from the room. Here we can see that our test student has stepped away for a bit, and now we see that the test student has come back into the room, so we get good information on what our students are doing. I did take a look at the option button up here when I wanted to mute everybody, but we can also see, as when we did chat, we can click here to find an attendee. Not a big deal with two students, but might be a bigger deal with multiple students. We can also detach this panel so that it stays with us as we do other things in the course. But as you can see, it certainly takes up some real estate on the participants side where we're going to be showing information and we can always merge the panel back into the Collaborate panel if we wanted. The third icon is fairly important for what we're doing in a classroom, and that is the sheer content. If we are a student user, this pane would mostly reveal the name of a file that a moderator, a presenter, an instructor was currently sharing with the conference. As you can see, for me as the moderator, as the instructor, I have a variety of choices. I can share a blank whiteboard, share an application screen, share my camera, share files. I can do polling. 
and I can create breakout groups. So there's quite a bit of rich information with this particular icon. Let's take a look at the share whiteboard option. We click on this and it brings up and shares a whiteboard that has several basic tools available with it. We have, for example, a pencil tool that would allow us to draw in different colors. We can select the color that we want to do our work in. Depending on how <laughs> facile you are with uh, what you have available, uh, you, can <laughs> you can do work. So you can do a drawing uh, with the pencil. You can click the Shapes tool and obviously create a variety of shapes that you might want to work with. And the shapes, of course, can be different colors as well. Here we have a bit of a awkward Venn diagram. The T creates a text box for us where we can enter text information as appropriate. The font itself is fixed at whatever that font is, but we can select a text box in order to reshape it, size it, delete it, all possible options. The eraser tool clears the whiteboard from the pieces of information that are there. If we have something on the board though, we can click on the pointer to the pointer tool which will allow us to point at whatever it is we're working with. We can click on the select tool and as you see, select and move an object or text around. We can also use this tool to make the object larger or obviously smaller and move that around. So the select tool is useful and the pointer tool, although we do have the mouse, lets us point out particular things on our whiteboard. So depending on what sort of work you're doing, the whiteboard might be uh, quite helpful to you. If you're done with this, you can stop sharing on a variety of screens you'll be using. You'll find this square in a circle and that's the stop sharing icon. So you can stop sharing by clicking on that option and the whiteboard has disappeared from my screen and everyone else's screen. I want to reopen the whiteboard a second for us and take a look at another feature that occurs when we have created something to be shared. And what happens as soon as we create something to be shared, we find on the left hand side, view controls pop up. View controls allow us to zoom in on something that's being shared zoom out on it, get a best fit, or get the actual size one-to-one. -one. As we change this, you might imagine that it would change what the participants will see. It does not. They have their own view controls. You would have to perhaps instruct them to enlarge whatever you're looking at, move around whatever you're looking at, uh, go back to the one-to-one -one size of whatever it is you're looking at. So these controls change your view, but what you change here does not affect what they see. What can I tell you? So we'll stop sharing. Clicking on the share application button brings up a pop-up window that allows you to share your entire screen, like this one, to share an application window of something that you have running, or to share a Chrome tab of a Chrome item that you have ready to work as well. If you want to share your screen, you have to click on the screen that you want to share. In this case, there is only one screen, so we would click on it and share it. If we had two screens or more, we would have to select the screen that we want to share. Otherwise, nothing happens. If you share the screen that is showing in your room, which is what we'll do right now, we get what might be called the Hall of Mirrors effect. It shows the same room over and over and over again. Perhaps a bit annoying, but that is the way that it works. So then you would select the application that you wanted to share, perhaps something you already had open. In this case, we'll share a PowerPoint presentation that we already have pre-prepared and the students will see it just as we see it on our screen. So here it is from the beginning using Collaborate Ultra at Kent State. What can I do with Collaborate Ultra? 
a variety of things, and so on and so forth. So animation works, slide progression works, as you would expect it to. So we exit our PowerPoint slide, and we're back to where we started. It's important to note that if you want to hear audio when you share an application, as you might want to do from, well, from a video in your PowerPoint or from uh, YouTube, when you click Share Application Screen and you pick the screen you want to share, you must also click on Share Audio. That, of course, would apply to any one of these. If you don't click Share Audio, then that system audio will not be heard by your students. In this example, I have a little slide that I'm using in another course, and we want to hear that audio. What is affiliate marketing? How does it work? In my experience, affiliate marketing is we help partners who sell stuff. Okay. We're basically partners so to that's educate. being heard across all of our participants. They all hear it together. This would work in a similar fashion if you wanted to share an application window or share a tab that you have up on Chrome. And again, don't forget to sh click share audio if that's important part of what you want to do. Share camera would allow you to choose a different camera if you have more than one connected to your computer. Maybe you have a document camera connected. Maybe you have a second view of yourself connected. Maybe you have a camera that's pointed to an artifact, an art piece, a, uh, uh, et cetera. Maybe you have a camera connected to a microscope. <laughs> Any of those things you could go ahead and select. You also can upload files in advance of your session, GIF files, JPEG files, PNG files, PDF files, PowerPoint presentations that are 60 megabytes or less, and you can upload multiple presentations if you want, and you can share those files. So here I'll share a PDF that I uploaded previously. So the students are now seeing this view of my PDF file. They, of course, can see me as I move through it. You'll notice this is not very visible. And again, I remind you, you can zoom in and see the details just fine. They are not going to see this increased size. You've got to ask them to go ahead and zoom up on their side and scroll around as is appropriate in order to see the parts that you want them to see. Uh, so here, here is France. We want to talk about France. And they're seeing this part. But on their screen, unless they've enlarged it, it's quite small indeed. As you can see, the way that you uh, add the files is to click on the Share Content area, click on Share Files, and you can select files by clicking here and finding it in your file structure, or you can drag and drop the files that you want to share to this space. Either way will work. The next thing that you might want to do is to poll your students. You remember from when we chatted last time, you can ask questions and have students click on their status and settings, and you can do sort of a quick poll of how things are going, yes, but you can do more elaborate polling as well over here. So you would click on polling, click on a multiple choice question if that's what you wanted to do, and you can enter uh, the question. You can add choices. So here we're putting the answers and adding a choice. And then we can start the poll. And our students have the opportunity to respond. We can see the responses as they come in. And we can also see how the poll is going. You can also respond to the poll if you like. Right now, the only thing the students see is their, their option to choose red, blue, or yellow. They don't see the count, and they don't see anything in terms of the answers until you click Show Responses. Once you click on that, they're able to see what's going on. The no response was the fact that I, the instructor, did not respond. To end the poll, as, you would, as we saw ending other sharing, click on the square in the circle. It ends the poll. If the results of the polling is important to you, at the end of the session, you actually have the option, we haven't seen it yet, to uh, view reports. 
and you can actually view a report of the polling. And in some cases, that might actually be a way for you to see the attendance of the students that are there. An important feature in the share content area is the opportunity to create breakout groups. The example works best with at least four people in the room. So I've added uh, Mary Bradley, she's joined us. Sam Adams is there, test student is there, and I make up the fourth one. Breakout groups are useful to facilitate small group collaboration. Uh, you can create these breakout groups. They're separate from the main room. Uh, you can have attendees in them in different ways. Uh, if your session has more than 250 students in it, uh, breakout groups is turned off. It does not, uh, it doesn't work with more than that. Uh, those breakout groups are going to have their own private audio, their own private video, whiteboard application sharing and chat in their room. Uh, any collaboration that takes place in the group is independent of the main room uh, and independent of other groups. And what is said or viewed in a breakout room isn't captured in recordings. Okay, so how do we approach this? You can choose to have collaborate, create and randomly assign breakout groups for you, which is what I've done here. We're gonna have two groups. They're gonna have two attendees each. I'm gonna click start. And we see that we're starting our big breakout groups. Each student now has information on what group they've been assigned to. We see that as things break out, Mary Bradley and Test Student are in group two. Right now, Sam Adams and I are in group one, so we're sharing information. And so I can see Sam, Sam can see me, we can communicate. But what's going on over in the other group with Mary and Test Student, uh, we are not privy to. This small arrow and little, what I call a doorway, allows me to move around. So I've now moved into group two, things pause while uh, that happens. And so now I'm in with Mary Bradley and the test student, and Sam is working with other folks in that room. And again, we can work together on whatever the project might be. Let's end the uh, breakout groups and everybody returns back to the main room. You wanna let your students know it takes a few seconds to move, move among groups, to move between groups. Another way to set up the groups is for you to assign students to a group. And so you might want Mary and Sam and the test student in group one, and you might want to be in group two. Uh, obviously that's a silly example, but you can see that you can control under custom assignment where they go to. Right now, the students cannot change groups. They don't have that little door with an arrow, uh, so they can't move around. They can't drag and drop themselves into different rooms. Obviously, when you set up your room, if you allow attendees to switch groups, they will be able to do just what it says. They'll be able to move among groups uh, by themselves. And so that might be something that's important for you as well. You have the option of moving students to another group, making them a moderator, making them a presenter, etc and you can boot them out, remove them from the session if they're a problem, although you can only do that for a short time period, a minute or so. Once you have groups set up, as long as you're in a main room, as long as you're not in a group, you can choose to share files uh, with a group, one or more of them. And to do that, you would go back to the option of sharing files. You would click on the file that you want to share and then click on the group that you want to share it with. Highlighting it, share now, and this is seen by the folks in the, in the group that you click uh, and not by the other uh, groups. So you can share different stuff with different folks. So students in different rooms, you might have different uh, pre-prepared prompts for them, uh, maybe uh, share a PowerPoint slide out with a prompt, different prompt, or the same prompt to each group. They could work on it collaboratively and then perhaps share that out uh, once you're ready for them to have them do so. A variety of things that you could do in these breakout groups. My settings gives you the following pop-up window. And as you see, you have a variety of things that you can do. 
Uh, in fact, in, you can edit your uh, image, set up your camera and microphone, use your phone for audio. Uh, you can work on notification settings and session settings or report an issue. Students who click on the icon don't see the session settings option. They see username, audio and video settings, notification settings, and report an issue. So if you want to change or upload a profile picture, you would begin by clicking on the icon that would be here. Uh, you can uh, remove the image, upload the image, capture the photo from the camera and indicate whether or not you want to always use this same profile picture. As you might imagine, uh, setting up your audio and uh, video is important. So here we can set up our camera and microphone. Uh, we can choose from the different mics that we might have available to us. And as you see, it tells us how we're doing with the mic. And having clicked on audio, then we can, hi there, then we can set up our uh, camera. And we might have different cameras to choose from as well. And you can indicate whether or not it is working uh, for you. And here you can see we're good to go. If students have some issues or problems, this is actually a good starting port point for them. Have them go to the bottom right hand side, open the Collaborate panel, click on this fourth icon, the Tools icon, and have them set up their camera and microphone. Check to make sure that everything is okay. If for some reason the mic isn't working well or you have bandwidth issues, you could use your phone for audio. Again, we mentioned in a prior session that long distance rates might apply. Uh, we can adjust the speaker volume as appropriate. In the notification setting area, we can set what sort of things happen during the session with notifications. So we can indicate whether or not we do or do, want, do not want collaborate pop-ups. Audio notification is people come in or leave a session or a breakout room, uh, whether we want a browser to pop up. When someone posts a chat, we can choose whether or not to have a pop-up for that, an audio notification or a browser pop-up. Uh, if there is closed caption avail available, we can have a pop-up to indicate that. Someone raises their hand, we can have a pop-up notification uh, for ourselves. Here I, by the way, I brought students back from the uh, breakout rooms, which I forgot to do, but we can see uh, whether or not someone is raising their hand by option. Here we have an audio indicator and we have a pop-up notification, oh, lower Sam's hand for him. And in the session settings, we can indicate whether or not we want to show only the moderator profile. We don't want to see any images of anyone else. Uh, whether we want to sh the, give the participants the ability to share audio, share video, post chat messages, draw on whiteboards and files. And finally, if you need to report an issue for a problem, you can describe what's going on. Uh, this goes over to the folks at Collaborate and uh, also goes over to the Kent State folks so that they can keep track of uh, what's happening of what's going on. And at this point, we'll exit out of the Collaborate uh, panel. This is a lengthy piece. It had a lot of options within it. And so we'll end this video for now. Uh, the next one, we'll look at what happens in the Sessions menu. Thank you.